talk about your new book, To Sell as Human. Many, many fascinating ideas in it. Could you start off by, by talking to us a little bit about why are we all in sales? Yeah, well, there are a couple animating ideas in, in the book, Adam. One of them is, is that, like it or not, we're all in sales. Uh, if you look at the labor data, one in nine people in the economy today, one in nine workers, makes a living selling stuff. They're car dealers, real estate agents. But I, I had an instinct about those other eight and nine, and went out and did some survey research and found that those other eight and nine, these are people who are not nominally in sales. They are managers. They are project team leaders. They are teachers and art directors. That they're spending an enormous amount of their time in what I call non-sales selling. They're, they're, they're selling. They're convincing you to make an exchange. Give me something you have in exchange for something that I have. But it's denominated not in dollars. It's denominated in time. It's denominated in, in attention. It's denominated in effort. And so I think if you look at how white-collar workers are spending their time, whether they're in traditional sales or some other kind of function, a lot of their time and effort is spent convincing, persuading, cajoling, influencing people. And the truth is, is that when you tell everybody, you, you tell people you're in sales, a lot of people don't like it very much at all. I don't want to be in sales. No, no one so does. I mean, why am I in it? <laughs> well, well, well. The re- well, I think what's interesting is that why people don't want to be in there because they have this association that sales is sleazy, slimy, smarmy, lowbrow, low rent. It's about hoodwinkery and sleazebaggery and all those kind of other great words that we use to describe it. You know, something is awesome when there's so many different synonyms to describe how duplicitous it is, and. My view is that that's a very outdated form of sales in all its dimension. That that is a view. The view that sales is slimy, smarmy, sleazy, duplicitous, is a view to me about the conditions in which sales have taken place for a long time, rather than the nature of sales itself. Um, and what I mean by that is that most of what we know about sales, sales, car sales, real estate sales, uh, whatever, uh, come from a world of information asymmetry, where the seller always has more information than the buyer. When the seller has more information than the buyer. The seller can rip you off. Period. This is why we have the whole principle of caveat emptor: buyer beware. But now, more and more, and not everywhere, but in a lot of markets, that information asymmetry is becoming more like information parity. And you see this in a you see this in sales, sales, business to consumer sales, where people walk into a car dealer armed with information that, in some cases, not even the car dealer him or herself had 20 years ago. You also see it in B2B sales, where you talk to basically anybody in B2B sales, and what, they're te- what they'll tell you is that they are the customer, the prospect, is engaging in the sales process far, far, far later in the game because they're able to do their own due diligence, their own information gathering, and they have a set of ideas, a set of options in mind when they engage the, the, the salesperson. So the animating ideas here are like it or not, we're all in sales now, but sales isn't what it used to be. And so if sales is more about the high road, not everywhere, but it's more about the high road, I said, well, what are the qualities that, that matter most? And there. I plumbed the research of social scientists like you and your colleagues all over the world to try to say, you know, let's not go based on books about um, 18 ways to close the deal or, you know, the, the kind of books that populate the sales shelves. Let's look a little bit at what social scientists have told us about what's effective here.